Hi, this is Jerry Walsh from Ditch Project, and today we're going to do a hand pan comparison video between this So Stainless Steel E La Serena hand pan and this Mile Octave Steel Tongue Drum, which is in D curd, and then also this Spirit hand pan, which is in D Celtic Minor. And this one is nitrated. So, first we'll start with the So hand pan. This is manufactured in Italy, it's made of stainless steel. It's got a really nice texture to it. It's very smooth. It just feels great to handle. Uh, and it sounds like this. So stainless steel it has like a really nice ring to it, a really, really nice resonance. Uh, a lot of people feel that the stainless steel is kind of like the best top level grade material you can make hand pans out of, you know, subjective opinion. Um, nonetheless, they are really, really epic to play and they're really beautiful and they have a really uh, clean finish and the sound just comes out in a way that uh, it just sounds like crystal clear is kind of the way I would describe it. It's very noticeable when you... Like the ringing sound when you play a st stainless steel pan and this E La Serena scale, really beautiful, really popular scale for a lot of different hand pans. And yeah, overall an excellent hand pan for the price and especially because of the material and the quality of the sound that comes through with it. Once again, this is the So Hand Pan E La Serena from Italy. And you know, in comparison, we have over here this is a nitrided steel pan uh, from Spirit Hand Pans from Asheville, North Carolina. And what's cool about this pan, it has a couple bottom nose as well. You can get a little creative with it. Seen people like to do this kind of sideways thing with it. Not my normal style of playing, but you know, you can get creative with it. I think it can open up a lot of doors. The hand pan is already such a uh, like mind-expanding instrument to play just due to like the circular nature of it and how you can just go all over the place and uh, strike it in different ways and it, it, it uh, beckons itself to be creative already and then it's cool to be able to play it sideways so um, it'll be fun to play a pan that has some of these bottom notes. So it's D Celtic Minor. Um, spirit hand pans I think are just super beautiful. Uh, the maker puts a lot of care and craftsmanship into them and they're made with like a lot of attention um, so just to share the scale
So yeah. Um, getting a stand with this one would be a really effective way if you didn't want to play it sideways or if you don't want to be lifting it up like this to play these bottom notes. But it's not too awkward to do. And yeah, really beautiful scale, Celtic minor. Um, and you can maybe sense a little bit of difference on these like nitrided pans versus stainless. Has more of like a metallic-y sound, I feel, with the nitrated pans. A little bit more, uh, more metal-y, more, a little more clashy on some level, but in my own personal feeling, I actually like the nitrated pans uh, a little bit more on some level. I love the stainless steel pans. They're totally top level quality. Just as my own subjective ear listening, I really love the nitrated. I also like the way they feel and they have a really nice kind of color to them as well. That's sort of, it's not as pronounced. It's kind of like pastel mixed into the dark steel. Uh, and yeah, this is a great scale. It has a kind of a melancholy, a little bit like beautiful haunting kind of vibe to it. And uh, just a lot of fun to play. And it's kind of like a little bit of a different layout with the notes. It has this more of an organic feel, less of a linear kind of sense of the notes. Um, just my experience with the way looking at it. I think it's the way that they, they bend the metal when they make the pans. Um, and yeah, both are awesome. Both are epic, both are beautiful. Uh, and I think it really comes down to just personal preference as opposed to one being better than the other. Like I said, the stainless steel has this extremely high polished, like ringing sound that really sounds very clear and crystal and highly refined, almost perfect. And I think the nitride is, sounds a little more raw, a little more rough. And for whatever reason, that's something that resonates me, with me more as a player. But in terms of quality, there's not really a drop off in one versus the other. It's just a different sound. Um, so I think that a good way to approach it is to kind of give an opportunity to play a stainless steel pan or play a nitride pan next to it and just sort of see what resonates more with you. And uh, Pretty cool to have a spirit hand fan here. We don't usually have these, and every time one of them comes through, which is every couple years, I was really excited to play them because she does such an amazing job of making these, and they're really beautiful. And you can really feel that it was um, the artist touch went into the instrument with the spirit hand pans in particular. So I really enjoy these, uh, and the so hand pans are super professionally done as well, um, and just like a different type of feel but they're, they're excellent and they're always at top quality and top level too, in my opinion. Excellent resonance. So the third pan we're gonna take a look at is the Octave Steel Tongue Drum. And what's awesome about this thing, you know, just right off the bat is how affordable it is and how, in, how good it sounds in respects to uh, the price of it. So, you know, hand pans can go anywhere, like stainless steel hand pans, nitrated hand pans, anywhere from like $1,300 to $3,000, sometimes more, depending if you have a lot more notes. This guy uh, is less than $400. So it's just an excellent thing if you are wanting to kind of get into the world of steel tongue drums, hand pans, but you're just not looking to drop a ton of money right away and you want to just feel it out a little bit. Uh, Minel created these and really beautiful mandala decal on here uh, and it's just a excellent instrument. It sounds really, really quality, has this cool rope braid, got a really nice textured feel to it um, and like the hand pan uh, and the rap drums, it's an intuitive instrument which means you don't need to have any musical knowledge whatsoever to play it and to make it sound quality. Uh, you can just walk over and arbitrarily touch something. a very beautiful sound and it doesn't require any skill or anything along those lines so the uh, space is there immediately to be creative and what I always tell people is that you know you don't need to take percussion lessons right away I, I always recommend people just play it a little bit and then from there once you kind of find yourself getting in these like loops where you're like okay I'm doing the same thing over again maybe take some percussion lessons and start to unlock some more rhythmic things with it but uh, this guy can be played with or without mallets And 
obviously, you know, you're looking at like a price point difference of like a thousand to like you know, two thousand dollar difference between this and that. So clearly, there's a difference in the sound. This is a much more muddied sound when it played, but at the same time, that's I think what makes these really awesome is that it has the sound of like the tank drum. You know, back in the day, they would make these slit tongue drums out of propane tanks, and uh, I've always just loved the sound of those drums because there's something, it's very metallic-y and it has a very distinct sound. It's not really trying to copy the handpan. It's a similar shape in the UFO flying saucer thing, but it really uh, has its own vibe with the metallic -y sound. So I think the way to look at it is like, it's not supposed to mimic that. It's supposed to resemble, but it, it's its own unique instrument and it sounds the way it does, um, which isn't bad or anything, it's just different. And I really love the uh, metallic -y kind of watery, um, propane drums sort of sound with it. It's, it's one of the, it's just a really beautiful, very therapeutic, sound healing, meditative type of energy. really really good sustain that's what's nice about these slit steel tongue drums uh, so the sound carries and carries and carries and it goes so in a, in a certain way it actually warrants itself to be played a little less rhythmically uh, and a little bit more perhaps meditatively and slower instrument uh, to combine with koshi chimes or flute, uh, things that have more atmosphere texture to them because it's more of like an atmospheric instrument. Although of course you can play it rhythmically and um, I find there's not a tremendous difference between the mallets and hands which is nice so there's a continuity with how you're playing it regardless if you're more of a hand person or a mallet person. sound though with the mallets that's for sure it's more precise more of a punch and uh yeah people someone was asking me the other day who was checking out hand pants if you can play these with mallets you can play these with mallets but i caution people just not to hit them too hard about playing with hands as opposed to mallets though is you can you know get more creative with your strikes like hitting on the um the ribs the sides not in the tonal field you can punch it which is nice and slap it so uh yeah hand pan you know it's designed to be played by your hands obviously but you can do it with, your, with the mallets and it's cool too. Um, and so these are all great options, great, great price point for a stainless steel hand pan, as they tend to be a lot more expensive because it's like the highest quality metal. At the same time, just because it's the highest quality metal and it creates that really perfect sound doesn't mean that there's anything that's off with the nitrite sound. Because like I said, you know, each person hears things differently and I prefer 
this sound more has a warmer and softer and also more metallic -y feel it's more like crystal and chimey uh, and then of course this is like more the traditional slit drum slit tongue drums you would see on the propane tanks the tank drums back in the day before hand pans existed and uh, it's an awesome sound that's very meditative and atmospheric and it's highly effective every time i hear someone playing one of these uh, in public regardless um, if it's like a good version of what like this is a very quality uh, tank drum steel tongue drum in my opinion um, but I've heard many people just playing these like funky ones that they get at, at some tour shop and it actually always sounds very beautiful to me as a listener and I'm always taken back by that so um, if you're not feeling the price point of the hand pan these things are, are really epic and I always enjoy listening to them and um, they're also very durable, which is great for traveling. It'd be hard to knock this guy out of tune. These are a little more fragile. Um, you strike them too hard or just over time, the way that metal is tuned, you might have to get it tuned up. My hand pan was in, made in 2007 or 2008 that I personally own. Uh, I've never gotten it tuned. It might be a little out of tune, but I kind of like it that way. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with that, but what's nice about these that are cut with laser uh, is that they just don't really go out of tune so you, and if you drop them and they're pretty durable unlike these guys who are a little more fragile um, of course these come with really powerful cases and uh, it's pretty easy to take care of them if you're mindful so hand pans are great but these are also great and uh, I personally think it's nice to have both a steel tongue drum and a hand pan because um, they're really different instruments but they're they're played in a similar way if you want to learn more about the hand pan check out our other handpan videos here.